Do solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. You are Carlethia Russell? Yes, sir. You can put your hand down. This is CC 23888 and 889. You were charged in each of these cases with making a false police report, which are misdemeanor offenses. I'm showing you a document titled Explanation of Rights. Did you go over this document with your lawyers? Yes, sir. Is that your signature on the last page? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions about this document or about your rights? No, sir. All right, then. And uh, there is no plea agreement here. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. In CC 23888, as to the misdemeanor offense of making a false police report, how do you plead? Guilty. And in CC 23889, as to the misdemeanor offense of making a false police report, how do you plead? Guilty. Fine. Do you have, uh, let's see. I'm a little out of order here. I'm showing you Courts Exhibit B. Did you go over this document with your lawyers? Yes, sir. And is that your signature at the bottom? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied that your attorneys, Mr. Henry Anthony, Richard Jaffe, and Lucky Millard, yes, sir. are good and competent attorneys and have represented you well? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied with the plea agreements in these cases? Yes, sir. Are you pleading guilty of your own free will? Yes, sir. Has anyone forced you or coerced you to plead guilty? No, sir. Has anybody promised you anything in exchange for your plea? No, sir. Are you pleading guilty because you are, in fact, guilty? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, at this time, uh, before we proceed, um, well, I find that your plea was made knowingly and voluntarily, and based on your plea, I find you guilty. Uh, before sentencing, first, is there anything uh, that the Attorney General's office would like to add? Yes, Your Honor, if you don't mind. Um, as the court is aware, I'm, I have asked for to speak today, and I have a lot to say, but the court has asked me to limit it to two minutes, and so I will do that. First of all, this case has always been about respect for law enforcement and respect for this community as a whole. Ms. Russell faked a kidnapping, duped the community, and contrived this situation. We still, Judge, don't know to this day where she was, how she got there, what she was doing, with whom she was doing it with. She, um, we, once we figured out that she was supposedly missing, the community got involved. Hundreds of people got involved. They took time away from their families, their work, their, their fun. Law enforcement got involved from federal, state, to local. And they took time away from their family, their people, their work, other cases that needed to be solved. This has been a case that it was taken advantage of, and it's our contention that Ms. Russell knew this would happen. She had researched it on the computer. She had researched search terms about Amber Alerts and the uh, movie Taken, all of those things. And then, Judge, when she came home, we have ring camera footage of her walking casually down her parents' street, and when she gets in front of her parents' house, she runs up there and starts beating on the door. Police were called. The body cam show that she's flailing around and still perpetuating this ruse that she was kidnapped. The ambulance was called. She goes to the hospital and she finally speaks with law enforcement and that's when she tells the story about that orange-haired man and woman tell, playing with her hair and eating cheeses. This ruse continues and it doesn't stop until a couple of days later when her lawyer issues a statement. So I have to say, Judge, that because of this ongoing complete disrespect for this community as well as law enforcement. It is our contention that she should get some jail time. I understand that it's a misdemeanor. I do. But because of the effect that it has had on law enforcement as well as on the community, we feel even if it's weekends in jail or nights in jail, that some sort of incarceration is warranted in this case. I think I kept it under two minutes. All right. Thank you, Ms. Morris. Right. Is there anything from the uh, defense attorneys? No, sir. Jack, what we're going to do is I'll let Ms. Russell make yes. a statement. Okay, Ms. Russell, before uh, being sentenced, you do have a right to make a statement. Is there anything you'd like to say? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I want to genuinely apologize for my actions and the resulting negative impact infl inflicted onto others. I made a grave mistake while trying to fight through various emotional issues and stress. I am extremely remorseful for the panic, fear, and various range of negative emotions that were experienced across the nation. 
I want you to specifically acknowledge and take accountability for the pain and embarrassment that I inflicted upon my family, my church family, friends, neighbors, community, and all of those who were directly involved in search efforts for me. I also extend my sincerest apologies to the Hoover Police Department and every other law enforcement agency and personnel for the position that I put them in and for the resources used. I absolutely regret my decision and in hindsight wish that I had cried for help in a totally different manner. My prayer is that I will be extended grace and given the opportunity to redeem who I truly am and restore the positively esteemed character that I have worked so hard to attain for the 25 years of my life prior to this incident. I wholeheartedly can say that I've never had any malicious intent to hurt anyone. And I pray that you will feel my sincerity and that as I prepare to pick up the pieces and go on to restore my life, that you will witness the fruition of grace. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Russell. Um, when we first made this report, you know, you alarmed the community, this community, and uh, you really alarmed the country because the story went nationwide, as you know. And then when it came out that it wasn't true, uh, not only was this community outraged, but and the country was outraged. Um, what you did was you, you wasted a lot of government resources, and, and you're going to pay for that. You're going to pay uh, every dime of that in restitution in this case. Um, it would be a waste of government resources to have a trial in this case. So you have taken responsibility, and, and we're not going to do that. It would be a waste of government resources to put you in jail. Uh, one of the most expensive things the government does is incarcerate people. And uh, we need to reserve our jails for people who are genuinely a, a threat to the community. Um, and um, although we're very upset about what you've done, you're not a threat to the community. I'm not going to treat you any differently than I would treat any other first-time non-violent misdemeanor offender. Accordingly, uh, it is the judgment and sentence of this court uh, that you're sentenced in each of these cases to six months in the county jail. Uh, these sentences are consecutive with each other, and these sentences are suspended. You're placed on rest. Uh, you're placed on probation for 12 months, it's supervised probation. It's a condition of your probation that you pay a full amount of restitution, which is $17,974.88, paid to the city of Hoover, 